Hi everybody, my name is Jaden. I'm Eli. I'm Jason. I'm Caden. And we are the Yahoo Tour YouTube channel. And we thank you very much for being at, here with us and hanging out. Nicole is in the kitchen. She's here with us in spirit um, and hanging physically within about 20 feet of me. So we are all here. We thank you guys very, very much for joining us. We thank you. We are the people who believe the laws, statutes, and commands of our creator stand the test of time. They will stand beyond when the earth is destroyed, when the heavens are destroyed, they will still be here. In fact, they were created 2,000 years before creation was ever created. And they are so important that we should abide them into our lives. We should mold them into our souls. We should have them at the tippy top of our minds. Our kids should be wailing in them. They should be swimming in them. They should be lavishing in the laws, statutes, and commands of our creator instead of rejecting them. The majority of the world has rejected the laws, statutes, and commands of our creator, and they do not care what he has to say. So I want to go over a couple of uh, uh, comments real quick. I guess the very first one is, um, this is one, this is just a lady that commented in, and this is what we call, and we don't want to offend people, but it's called the cult of the Christians. And you believe what you believe because that is what a guy has taught you, and so that is what you believe. And regardless of what scriptures say, you will believe a man on a in a you know raised platform that's standing there in a in a, a pulpit. And this is what um, Patricia Coyle says, and she was replying to somebody. She goes, "Jesus is the Son of God, and He is God, Father God, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit is God, three person in the Trinity." Oh boy. Yeah, and I mean that's that's all she says to this, and I mean I, I don't even know what to say to things is like what, this anymore. Is there any scripture backing up that? Um... Yeah, it's like I almost feel like like blocking everybody, like hiding from channel. But, you know, it takes so long to go through this stuff. There is nowhere in scriptures anywhere that says the son is the father and the father is the son. It's very unbiblical. It's uh, man-made. It is absolutely man-made. It is, it is a Catholic church construct. It means the Catholic church. They invented this in about 325 A.D. after the death of our Messiah is what they said. And so it's just more craziness of the christian religion if there's any truth to that show some scriptures where that says that and no they, they'll to... jay they'll quote i am right um well uh, <laughs> that you gotta understand he says they walk to him and said hey who here is the messiah and he goes i am he's not saying yeah who i like that someone who says come to me and says i'm a carpenter he says hey which one used the carpenter and he go i go i am that doesn't mean i am yahuwah Yep, and here's a comment that came off of Cade's uh, pig video that he did, and um, this is from Marie Kelly. She starts here. In the Old Testament, God gave dietary laws to Israel. Remember, he didn't give them to everybody. He only gave them to Israelites. When Jesus died on the cross, he didn't just die for our sins. He fulfilled the Old Testament law. He fulfilled the laws against unclean food. Ephesians 2, 15 and 16. By setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace and in the body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross by, by which he put to death their hostility. Okay, anyone want that? Then she goes on, I she mean, quotes we, a bunch of Paul. We talk Paul, about, Paul, Paul, Paul. We Paul. talk about this a lot, and the Messiah still followed the laws. He came to fulfill the law. There was a prophecy in there, so he came to fulfill that prophecy. What does that mean, to fulfill? It so, means to do. He came to do what was said. Yeah. He didn't come to abolish or destroy. I mean, he, if he if he said, think not that I came to destroy the law or the prophets, and then 20 chapters later destroy the law and prophets, he'd be a liar. He's a liar, yeah. He'd literally not be the perfect lamb. He'd literally commit a great sin and throw everyone astray. He'd yeah. just like really just been the false messiah if he did that. But he didn't. And where we have he where he died for our sins and fulfilled the Old Testament. You're right, he did fulfill the Old Testament. He filled the prophecies, but he did not do away with anything that was said inside of that. Because he died on the cross means he forgave us for our sins. He was our perfect sacrifice. He didn't do away it means with anything. Yah, Yahuwah forgave us for our sins using the blood of his son. Okay, so creating a new humanity. I don't know what that means. When yeah, you, this when is this is all it's some crazy like almost it, witchcraft. Like it, creating a new humanity, new it, age stuff sounds like it's really evil, right? He like where she says he fulfilled the Old Testament law. He fulfilled the laws against unclean food by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. 
Wow, that's um, insane. So quick thing she said uh, there for Yisrael. Well, if you want to follow Allah, you are Yisrael. Because no other, no, Yahuwah does not save any other nation beside Yisrael. Not the current nation, but the people who are following his commands and having the faith of Messiah. There, yeah. There is no house of Gentile, my friends. And so if you're looking to be saved... There's no it, house of Babylon, no house of anything. If you are not yeah. following laws, statutes, and commands, you will be destroyed when the return comes. Yep, there's no house of Christian. There's no house of Mormons. There's no house of Catholics. There's none of that. Okay, let's continue on what she says. She goes to Galatians 3, 23, 26. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto faith, unto the faith, which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. For ye are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. So she used the words of Paul to free herself from the law. It's crazy because Paul wasn't even talking to her. He's talking to Galatians and we're not in Galatia in that day and age. We are we are in this current age where we know what's all, for all generations, and the words of Paul aren't. So she's taking one verse here, and she's... Yeah, she's way out of context. There's 53 times in our Torah that it says to guard the commandments of our Creator, and she's definitely not guarding it. Then she goes into Romans 10.4. Christ is the culmination of the law, so there be there may so that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. So, uh, all so you it, got, it didn't say no law. None of those have said so far no law. It's the last one that said we, we have faith. We're now we now have salvation and faith. We don't longer under death but under life. We have but it doesn't say the Torah isn't aware of. Then she goes on. Jesus says all foods are clean. We are oh, free no. to eat whatever. Uh, technically no, he never said that. It was about <laughs> she quotes, she quotes from Mark seven. Hold on. Mark seven, eighteen, nineteen. Are you so dull? he asked. Don't you see that nothing that enters a man from the outside can defile them, for it doesn't go into their heart, but into their stomach, and then out of their body? In saying this, Jesus declared all foods clean. There's that parenthesis. Here's two, there's the man-made doctrine. Even doctors. if this was in doctrine, if this was written, say there's no parentheses, it just continues on. Pig would have been food. They would have been Pig food would, sacrificed to idols. It would have been clean meat that was sacrificed to idols. Well, first of all, she starts off saying we don't have Levitical laws. So she doesn't have the same laws that, that everyone else does. Well, le eating unclean foods is not Levitical. That's for all the people. Well, and, and if, you are, if you're eating foods outside of Leviticus 11, that's not considered food. That's considered trash. Yeah, abomination. All right, let's go on. She, her God, Paul, continues on. Romans 14, 20, and 21. Do not tear down the work of God for the sake of food. All things indeed are clean, but they are evil for the man who eats and gives offense. It is good not to eat meat or to drink wine or to do anything by which your brother stumbles. Oh my, oh my. It's the first this time is... we've ever heard this. I've never heard this before. Have you but guys ever heard people, this before? You guys are taking this so far out of context. You're not even, you're pulling up verse on the internet saying, where's all food clean and reading off the first Satanist that put it up on a website. Here we have, he says, this was food sacrificed to idols. This was not even a correct thing when he says it makes a stumble because one guy said, because we know that we shouldn't do anything with idols. So someone saw somebody else that was with a Gentile trying to teach Gentiles eat meat that was sacrificed to idols, and it made him stumble because he didn't understand why he's eating meat with idols. And that's why he says it caused an offense. If it caused an offense, you should not cause your brother to stumble by eating this meat. Yeah. Right, and this was a sacrifice to idols. You're not supposed to do anything sacrifice to idols. But Paul said, if you don't know where it comes from, just eat it anyways. But he's not talking about unclean food because unclean food is not considered food. It is considered something else like Earth cleaners. I gotta admit, this is kind of depressing. It it's really the same is. stuff over and over. Yeah, it's exactly new verses, new verses, guys. Yeah, they don't have any new verses. Let's continue on. First Corinthians eight thirteen. Therefore, if I eat what I eat causes my brother or sister to fall into sin, I will never eat meat again, so that I will not cause them to fall. Again. Exactly the same thing as the last one. You don't know if meat was sacrificed to idols or not. They were in. They were living in Gentile times. The Corinthians did not have. Yisrael, they did not have a Levitical priest, so they had paganism all about. There was food sacrifice idols. So in the marketplace, you're going to buy a slab of meat, and you don't know where it came from. So he was saying that if your brother is angry that you're eating meat because you don't know where it's from, then don't eat meat again because you don't want your brother to stumble and walk out of the faith because you are committing you are committing an offense to him. You are hurting him by eating meat because you don't know where it's from. It could be from idols, and you're not supposed to deal with idols. One last verse, Romans 14, 1 through 3. Except the one whose faith is weak, without quarreling over disputable matters. One person's faith allows him to eat anything, but another whose faith is weak eats only vegetables. The one who eats everything must not treat with contempt the one who does not. And the one who does not eat everything must not judge the one who does, for God has accepted that. I think this is where Yeshua, Yahushua said, 
I thank you for opening the eyes of the simple and the fools and letting them see the true meanings behind things because here he's using a parable. He's not even using a, he's using metaphors for these things because if you use one that's weak, right? If you only eat vegetables, you're going to be weak, right? That's that's what he's trying to get across here. He's trying to get across that if you don't have a balanced meal, if you don't eat strengthening foods, he says you're going to be weak in the faith. And if you only have one thing and not the other, if you take grace and not the Torah, you're going to be weak in the faith. Or if you take the Torah and not Yahushua, you're going to be weak in the faith. I agree, but you would have vegetarians out there that would disagree. And yeah, I know. That, you, you guys, and I, yeah, there, it's. I don't. I don't. I'm not down the road that you have to eat all meat or you have to eat all vegetables or anything of the sort. Paul's I, just making an analogy right. here on this thing where he and says you need to eat. This is the food. depressing part. I won't. I. I. I guess. I mean. I. I quoted her some stuff here. I said, "This is what I said, dear sis. There's no house of Gentiles. Gentiles aren't saved. You have quoted Paul, and if that is your God, then that is your choice." If you truly care what Yahuwah wants for you, he doesn't want you getting sick from unclean food. You quoted these verses out of context. Not a single one has to do with food. This is the dangers when you make Paul your God and throw away half your Bible. Normally, I'd requote these verses in full context, but nobody that is in the cult of Christianity will pay any attention. So this falls on deaf ears. Messiah Yahushua was talking about washing your hands before eating. He was not talking about eating unclean foods. You want to be the house of Yisrael, not the house of Gentiles. Gentiles are sent to the bad part of Shoal. Sis, I know how you are programmed, and the only thing I can beg you to do is read your scriptures yourself. Our Creator hates those who eat pig. He doesn't want to hear from you, nor does He want your prayers. That's all in scriptures. May Yahuwah open your ears and, oops, it should be eyes and ears. So I will correct that when we're done. Um, yeah, so He needs to, um, I, I don't have anything other than, it's just kind of sad. Um... Now let's get into some real good scriptures here. We got Brother Glenn here, and um, this comes from yesterday, and I thought this um, was important, and we should read this real quick. With your permission, allow me to provide some explanation for this morning's teaching. That was yesterday. It's important when reading scripture to not ignore context in which the passages were written. It gives a better understanding of what scripture is, communi is communicating. The parable of the wedding feast is a fascinating parable and is a stab right through the heart of the unrepentant. In the chapter prior to this parable, Yahushua wrote, just rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. This would have been on the 10th month, 10th day of month 7, when the lambs for Pesach are selected. Matthew records that he went into the temple, overturned the tables, and drove out the money collectors. He's creating quite a stir, and the religious leaders are not happy. And maybe, just maybe, he was infuriated by the thought he, that four days later he would have to die. The parable of the wedding feast is a picture of the nation of Israel. Israel is invited to a wedding party. This is the return of Yahushua. They declined, so the king extends the invitation to everyone else, the Gentiles. Anyone that wants to go is invited. The wedding party was not just any party, but the greatest party of all time. They should have been excited, ecstatic, but instead they tore up the invitations, murdered the messengers, prophets, and went back to their lives of sin. Yahushua is alluding to those who decline will be cast into hell. But that's not what this passage is about. Why are they weeping? Are they in physical pain and torture? I don't think so. They were weeping because they were kicked out of a party of a lifetime and for all times forever. Remember, they are the ones that tore up the invitations and murdered the messengers. Now we're getting to the point you had a question about. Why did the king kick the one man out of the party? The king approaches the man and asks where his wedding clothes are. When given the opportunity to repent and ask to join the party, he still remains speechless. He cannot admit to his wrong. He's cast out not because he's not unworthy to be at the party. Everyone is unworthy that is there. He's cast out because he refused to enter in worthily by repenting and accepting Yahushua as Messiah. That's the picture of the nation of Yashrael. That's what Yahushua is getting at. The nation of Israel cannot admit its faults and refuse to enter the party worthily. That made a lot of sense. Yeah, the parable is a slap in the face, to, is a slap in the face, a wake up call to the Pharisees, they who thought they were the shoe ins and that they were the in crowd, holier than thou. But Yahushua makes it clear everyone is invited, but you still got to have manners. You got to clean yourself up. Though they, though they thought their lineage guaranteed them a spot, but Yahushua pointed toward their heart, and their heart was of stone, not flesh, with the Torah written on it. Okay. Um, that's that's it for that part. So thank you, Brother Glenn. Appreciate that. Very um, insightful. Yeah, very insightful. With guys, thoughts on this? That was good. Yeah, that, that made a lot of sense. Yeah, that definitely helped out understanding what that was all about. Yep. And so, all right, handy data. I didn't do the day yet. 
Um, tonight is no moon. Tonight is no moon. So tomorrow night we'll be blowing our shofars. Okay, so let me try not to dump truck this here. Okay, so ten, today is the 29th day on our creator's calendar. It is the 25th day on the Babylonian October calendar. It is the third day of the week and it is the seventh month. And so, Nicole, you said what? There's no moon tonight, so it's the dark moon. So we, tonight, dark is a, moon. tonight is a dark moon. Yep. There's nothing there. Nothing there. Okay, and tomorrow? Tomorrow night. Is the new moon. Is the new moon. Okay, so the thir it starts on the 30th. Do we have our moon on the wrong spot or not? No, it's right. On, on ours? On both of the month seven and month eight because it's showing you that it's tomorrow night. Okay. And then the next day is our new moon day. New moon day is the... Is the first day of our creator's calendar of month eight, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. So I think we got this um, dialed in. Nicole is getting the calendars dialed in. So let us begin. Anyone have anything? Gentlemen, how you doing? Good. Good. Jade, how you doing? Your Good. head looks better. Yep. You don't have the, it doesn't look as crushed. Yeah, it's a little better. A little, little bruise in there still. A little, little tiny bruise. A little bump there too, I think. It does so. look like it. You might look like Quasimodo, the guy from the Hunchback of Notre Dame. At least you did like a week ago. You, you did, but. Yeah. Um, that's all right. You're coming back out of it, so. All right, here we go. Matthew 23. Then spoke Yahushua to the, the multitude and to his Talmudians, saying, The scribes and the parashim sit in Moshe's seat, and therefore whatsoever he bids you guard, that diligently guard and do. But do not ye after their reforms and traditions, for they say and do not. Okay, right out of the gate, he just crushed these guys, right? And for all of the Christians out there who believe that the uh, Perishim and the, the Sadducees and the Pharisees were all good law keeping people. Messiah Yahushua says in verse 3 that they are not, that they, they are go after their traditions. And that is what Judaism is all about. Judaism is not Torah keeping, Yah loving, Messiah Yahushua involved people. They are people that keep 25 plus other books outside of the Torah that allows them to be evil to their neighbors. They allow them to do extremely great evil. And uh, for some reason, they think they're the uppity uppities that are in the laws of Yah. But Yah would not ever have them doing the stuff that they are doing. Verse 4. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be born. And lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. So right here, when we were talking about washing our hands, that is what he's talking about, right? That is the burdens, grievous burdens. And he's not just talking about washing their hands. When they washed their hands, it was a ceremony. Like they did something, they spin around with one hand and they spin around with the other hand. And it's not just like you take soap and water and wash them and you're done, shake it off. Right? They had a huge ceremony for this and they would not eat. This is against the Torah. It has, we, there's no such thing in that. And so when you're laying extra things on people, that is the burdens. And the Christians, for whatever crazy reason, have decided that the laws of our creator, those are burdensome. We don't want those things. And so that's where they get not reading their scriptures. And it's, it's sad. Five. But all their works they do for for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the seat seats of their garments. All right, what do you guys have for phylacteries? Um, Tip that one? is the boxes containing scripture verses. Oh, have one on. oh yeah, so... Um, it's one Jewish box. On yeah, there. the Jewish box thing. And that is the stuff that Joshua Aaron, who is a, uh, I guess what you call a messianic Jew, and we are not messianic Jews. We're not nothing. We are Torah keepers. But that's what he did. He dressed his kid up with one of those little prayer boxes, and he has a little thing that goes up his arm and up his head. And this is what Messiah Yahushua, again, those prayer boxes, those are man-made doctrines. That is not in scriptures anywhere. You, I suppose you could get it when it says bind the laws, the statutes and commands on your, your head or your eyes, the frontlets of your eyes. I believe that is what they're attempting to do, but there's no such thing that we have. And so Messiah Yahushua yet spanks them again. So again, on five, but all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the seat seats of their garments and love the uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets and to be called of men, rabbi, rabbi, but be not ye called rabbi for one is your rabbi, even Mashiach and all are brethren. Okay, there's a commandment. 
right? Don't call anyone rabbi. Don't call anyone rabbi. So if you're sitting there calling, and people will, they've actually come to this channel and they've called me a rabbi, and I'm not, I'm not a rabbi. I'm not, a, I'm, I, I'm not even a teacher. I'm just some dude sitting around a table out in the middle of a jungle with my family, and we're reading and trying to decipher this with all of you. If anything, we're all, we're all learning this at the same time. So there's another command of Messiah Yahushua: Do not be called rabbi. And it says, for there is one of your rabbi, and uh, for you have one teacher, and you are all brothers, is what it says in the NIV. What does your guys say? Read that, will you? On yours? Yep. But do not be called rabbi, for one is your teacher, Hamashiach, and you are all brothers. Okay, yeah. And so it's, when it says, I think Mashiach is the wrong, well, it says even Christ in the uh, in, or in the king. Yeah, Mashiach is rabbi. Yeah, right, but it's also, is it, it's also teacher though, right? Uh, Adonai says teacher. Yeah, this one, there's one that I think it's Adonai is teacher. Um, okay, well, I don't know. So nine. And call no man your father up on the earth, for one is your father, which is in heaven. Okay, there's another big thing. And, you know, we have... Yehoshua's on earth right there. There's three billion people that call some dude, that some crippled old guy that can that is like in, involved in massive sin, they call him father. Right? They call the Pope of the church, everyone, they, oh, Holy Father, oh, Holy Father, oh, Holy Father. That breaks Matthew 23, 9 right here, that we're not supposed to do that, right? We have one Father. We have a real Father. We do not have some man-made dude that sits and absolves people in a box. That's, that's just satanic. That's, there's nothing about it. He, he can't forgive our sins. What power does he have? Yeah. Okay, and there's another commandment. Next, 10. Neither be ye called teachers, for one is your rabbi, even Mashiach. Okay, and so what do you guys have on yours? Neither be leaders, for one is your leader, Hamashiach. Yeah, what does that say here, guys? It tells us who is in charge of us, who is our leader. It's Yahushua. He's yeah. saying we're all equals. No yeah. one should be higher than another. Well, guy. what does this say here? Because the Christians will take a man and they will make him their leader, and they will pay him 10%. They will pay him, you know, the church will give him a salary. And they call him a preacher, right? Is a preacher the same as a teacher? I mean, is that what... That's what they're referring to because that is who their person is that teaches. But that shouldn't even be a job. That shouldn't even be a paid job. That should just be a normal thing people do is go out and teach the word. But they've taken it and made it into their own little enterprise, their yeah. own little entrepreneurship. And they build their build their kingdom in the church and they build their livings off the church. Absolutely. In fact, to take it a step further, they become a... IRS tax haven, right? They, 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 every church, including Jim Staley's, is a 501c3. That means they can only say certain things. They cannot, when, when 2019 came along and all of the churches of the world stayed silent and not a single person has said anything and let the atrocities of the world happen, that's because they're 501c3s. They didn't want to lose their paychecks and they couldn't lose that stuff. And so you can't speak out against the government if you want to be a 501c3 and not have to pay Taxes. Okay. 11. So we have three commandments there, right, Nicole? Yep. Okay. Four. 11. Do we have four? No, so far. Oh, okay, so far. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant, and whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. But woe unto you, scribes and perishim, hypocrites, for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go entering to go in okay this is hardcore right here right this essentially says that they're not only teaching incorrectly but that they are causing other men not to, to stumble right, right. Said, you're not getting to heaven and then you're making everyone else not get in heaven yeah and these people are going to be all these christian preachers all of these people that are teaching against the torah they're in deep troubles everybody is in very very deep trouble 14 Woe unto you, scribes and perishim, hypocrites, for ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Woe unto you, scribes and perishim, hypocrites, for ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte. And when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of gay Hinnom than yourselves. Okay, what does is, what is your guys say on 14? 14 says, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you eat up widows' houses, and for, for, and for a show make long prayers. Because of this, you shall receive greater judgment. Okay, what is the next one, 15? 
Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you go about the land and sea to win one convert, and when he is one, you make him a son of Gehinnom twofold more than yourselves. How would that be? How do they how do they make them a son of Gehinnom? Uh, because they teach them they teach them the wrong things. They don't even have the right doctrine, so they be yeah. they, they have everything they do is completely wrong. Dress them up as penguins, right? And then they uh, they're sinning. Send them and off to and yeah, and, send them off to Antarctica and, and the, the penguins. And they're sinning completely, and that's all their life is becomes sin. Yeah, they set up, dress them up as, as things. They break out their straight razors and circumcise them right there, right? And it's. it's these people have no idea what the real laws, statutes, and commands of our Creator are, and so it's just, it's useless. They're they're going into men. It's worse for them because they don't even know the commands. Where they the Pharisees should have known the commands. They, they absolutely did know the commands, but they also took on those other 25, 26 books, and which is why brother, right, which is why brother Shaw gets completely confused, and he wants women to shut up. He wants them to wear head gears. He wants them to, uh, not to teach all of that stuff, which is anti Torah. That stuff is not in the Torah. And so we have to understand what is in Torah and what is not, because when we see things that are violating Deuteronomy 4, 2, we have to call it out. And so not having a woman teach is, is Talmudic. It's the Jews. It's not who we are. Okay. Um, where are we 16. at? 16. 16. Woe unto you, ye blind guides, which say whosoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing. But whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he is a debtor. All right. Anyone have anything on that? Read that, will you? Woe to you blind guides who say, whoever swears by the Michigan, it does not matter. But whoever swears by the gold of the Michigan is bound by oath. Mm, I don't so know. these guys are making their own oaths where, like, if you swear by the money inside of the altar, inside of the temple, then you're bound by an oath. But if you swear by the name of the Michigan, then it doesn't matter. They So they're just making up whole new commands where yeah. money is more important than the actual temple. Right. And what do we know about swearing? If they're not supposed to swear by anything on heaven or earth. Because we can't do anything. We don't have any control over our own hair. So they had these guys breaking laws, doing this. Well, I swear by the gold of the temple. Oh, okay, I swear by the gold of the temple. Okay, 17. Ye fools and, and blind, for whether is greater, the gold or the temple that sacrifices the gold. And whosoever shall swear by the altar, it is nothing. But whosoever swears by the gift that is upon it, he is guilty. Anyone want to take a shot at this? Yeah, Yahushua says if you... Uh swear by the altar it does not matter but if you swear by the gift altar, because that's what you're giving to yah you're not giving the altar to yah you're giving your gift by yah if you say if you're swearing to give a gift to him you're um, bound by that oath you need to give him that gift and if he says that's what uh, they say if anyone swears by the altar it means nothing but anyone who swears by the gift of the altar is bound by yeah. the oath that's what the you pharisees also say. say you also say ye f all right okay so, right so that's the pharisees the pharisees are, are again making up more oaths and stuff that they're swearing by like stuff they're giving to yahuwah yeah, and we know that we are not to swear by anything. And, and the gift that is on the altar is a perfect lamb sacrifice. And if you are blemished and you go and sacrifice that that lamb, when you leave, you're still blemished, right? It, it's all, you're still guilty of all of this. 19. Uh, actually, 20, right? No, 19. 19. Ye fools are and blind, for whether is great greater the gift or the altar that sacrifices the gift. Whoso therefore shall swear by the altar swears by it and by all things thereon. So he's basically, you know, a lot of the stuff we wouldn't understand because we weren't out there. But these guys go around like, well, do you swear? Do you swear by the altar? Do you swear by the gifts of the altar? Things like this. And, it, and Yahushua says clearly that it doesn't matter what you what you do if you're making a swearing. You know, what's greater? It's, it's all that you're swearing this. And you shouldn't be swearing like that. And we're not talking about curse words. We're talking about like oaths of that kind. Okay. 21. Mm -hmm. And whoso shall swear by the temple swears by it and by him that dwells therein. And he that shall swear by heaven swears by the throne of Elohim and by him that sits thereon. Now, that's scary, right? Because we know that we're not supposed to be taking an oath. So if you're sitting there swearing, especially if you say, I swear to God or I swear to Yah or something, um, <laughs> that's dangerous. Okay, 23. Woe unto you, scribes and perishim, hypocrites, for ye pay tithe of mint and a niece and cumin and have omitted the weightier matters of the Torah, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye have to, ye to have done and not to leave the other undone. Okay, what is he saying? He says you he get. He says they basically only have half. They refuse to do anything that's right. right. Well, he says you get in the NIV. It's a little easier. It says you give a tenth of your spices, mint, dill, and cumin, but you have neglected the more important matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faith. Right, and so. 
he's basically saying that they're they care about one side of this thing, but they don't they care, care about the, they the, care the about rest the, of it. The money side. The money thing is really what's important, and what like the riches. Judgment, mercy, and faith. Yeah, these ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone. Mine says fidelity. Fidelity. Justice, mercy, and fidelity. Uh, mercy, belief. fidelity. Yeah, so belief is what you guys have. Yeah, faithfulness. Okay. Yeah, maybe. faithfulness. Okay. Um, 24. Ye blind guides, ye blind guides which strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. <laughs> okay, woe unto you, scribes of Perishim, hypocrites, for ye make the cling the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Okay, yet again, he's talking about traditions of these guys. If you guys would ever watch a Catholic, uh, seance, I'm going to say it's a seance because anything in the Catholic church is of the devil. They will take it. In fact, back when I was a kid, I used to go with my buddy, Jonathan off and we'd go to the, the Catholic church and my mother was Baptist. And so it was really weird going to the Catholic church. So we'd go in there and you would sit down, you basically sit. And then they have these little uh, prayer things. They come out from under the pews, under the pews, you slide this thing down and you get on your knees, like in between the pews, you can get between them. But the thing that was really odd is at the end of every one of these seances, these Catholic seances, is they had everybody line up and the priest would sit there and they, I don't, I don't know if it was orange juice or wine or what it was, but they would pour it. The priest would take a drink. He would take a cloth, wipe that cup out around and then hand it to the next guy. And they would sit there. And I think the priest was taking a drink for every drink that these guys were doing. By the time it was over, I don't know who was more sloshed. But anyway, that is the, that is what they were doing. They were taking that and they were doing exactly what Messiah Yahushua just talks about there and making the outside of the cup and the platter cling, right? But the insides is where the disease and, and the stuff sits. And so, all right, let's continue on. He's talking about like their hearts inside are... Their hearts yeah, well, them well that, and that, that's it, right? Yeah. yeah, and but I'm, I'm trying to relate that to the what, I, how the Catholics have I taken know. this and they've made their entire doctrine. But okay, anyone else have anything on this? Did I miss a point? Uh, no. I don't think so. I think that I think he's more talking about like how the inside of them is very dirty, but the outside of them might look, might look good and stuff. It's they, not what goes in a man that pollutes them, right? It's what their heart is. They're, they're filthy, dirty people inside. 26. You blind perishy. Cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter from the outside of them may be cling also. That the outside of them may be cling also. What is he saying? It's from time in parables. And he says basically clean your heart first before you make your outside look good. Cling the whole dish, right? Cling your entire dish. Just don't take that little Catholic rag and wipe off the thing and then hand it. I literally, 200 people would stand there and drink from the same cup. Oh, and so this guy, yeah, and this guy would sit there. And drink. I was blown away. I never made it through that line. I never went there, but everybody went there. They got their little wafer cracker. They got their little thing. And it was literally in one hour. The Catholics have this so dialed in. They can do their entire seance in one hour, right? They have like a priest that does it from six to seven. Then the next one is seven to eight. And people just come lying in. Whatever time you can make it, there's hundreds of Catholics. And they're, they're all blind. They're completely blind. Okay. Um, 27. 27. Mm, 20, yeah, yeah, yeah. 27. 27. Okay, woe unto you, scribes and perishim, hypocrites, for ye are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are full within, full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. Whitewashed tombs. Whitewashed tombs. There you go. So, sepulchre is, is the tomb, right? Um, and so, essentially, he's saying, you know, the insides of the, the tombs all have unclean, dead bones and stuff like that, but the outside it looks all spiffy and span. So it's, it's fake. You know, he's calling out the fakers. Okay, 28. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Woe unto you, scribes and perishim, hypocrites, because ye build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchers of the righteous and say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would have not been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore, ye be witnesses unto yourselves that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. And this is crazy because he knows in like three days now, right? He's, gonna, he's going to be killed. So he's all, this is, you know, this is amazing stuff he's, he's speaking right here. 32. Fill ye up when the measure, fill ye up then the measure of your fathers, ye serpents, ye offspring of vipers. How can ye escape the damnation of Gehenna? Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them shall ye scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city, that upon you may come all the righteous, 
that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Havel unto the blood of Zechariah Yahu, son of Berah Yahu, Yahu, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. Amen, I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this nation. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you that kill the prophets and stone them which are sent unto you, how often would I have gathered your children together, even as a hen gathers her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. For I say unto you, you shall not see me henceforth, till ye shall say, blessed is he that comes in the name of Yahuwah. That's, that's crazy stuff right there he's saying, right? And he's essentially saying that these guys had a chance that they should have grabbed all the people that were there and, and protected them like a, a chicken. And we're, we're familiar with chickens, right? We're not familiar with chickens and babies in that category. We're familiar with all the babies, but we can't get our chickens to like actually uh, have babies. But if they did, they would gather them all. From the times that we have seen that happen, they gather them all and they sleep under their wings, right? That is what they should have been doing. And he says, you, you mess this up. Uh, your house is left unto you desolate, right? It is gone. And then he says, well, the final thing he says, uh, I think is, is under, that we should understand is that he says, you shall not see me henceforth till, I, till ye say, blessed is he that comes in the name of Yahuwah, right? So a lot of these people, he probably would never see until after the crucifixion. And then they're going to go, whoa, blessed is he that comes in the name of Yahuwah. All right, anyone have anything? Um, basically, we be doing traditions and commands only. Yeah, don't, 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 the traditions of men, traditions of men have you going to church on a Sunday. That is not a Sabbath day. That is not the day we should be worshiping. If you are worshiping on a Sunday, well, you're in really good company because the entire world worships on a Sunday and nobody cares. They all say, well, Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath and uh, I, uh, that's, uh, that means I can worship whenever I want. Okay, well, that's what's up to you guys, and this is all we're trying to do is we're trying to bag, we're pleading with you, we're trying to get those who are willing and who will be able to listen, and this is a hard job because every single day we get the same stuff over and over and over, and nobody seems to care, nobody seems to listen, but there are a few, there are a few, and um, for those few that do listen, uh, we love you, we love all of you, but uh, hopefully those uh, who will turn to Yah, we love you guys even more. And I don't even know about that, but you will be our kingdom family, and um, we can't wait to see you. Okay. All right. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.